In this section, we're going to learn about what we call the markings on these big bones of the cranium. What do I mean by markings? A marking is any uh, distinct part of the bone that we call out and give a name. So it could be a part of the bone, it could be a hole in the bone, it could be a ridge on the bone. All of the marking is just a general term for a thing on the bone that we can uh, give a name to and uh, point out. So this is the frontal bone, so it's cleverly on the front, um, has the orbital part that we've already talked about, uh, ends at the back at the coronal suture here, and um, it has above the orbital part, it has this uh, supraorbital margin, which is just this edge uh, where the frontal bone curves under to become the uh, orbital part. Within that supraorbital margin, there is a supraorbital foramen or notch. So if it's a foramen, it's a hole. Foramen means hole. Uh, if it's not a complete hole, then it's a notch. Okay, and a notch is, it, it means a, a notch, an incomplete hole. So let me uh, grab you my. So if it is a notch, then it's usually like this. Okay, so the bone comes across, makes a little indentation, that would be a notch. If, on the other hand, the bone is complete and then there's a little hole like that, then it's a foramen. Okay, so those are the those are the differences there. Oh wait, hang on, erase all ink. There we go. Okay. Oh, other things. Okay, so that's your supraorbital foramen or notch. Supra meaning above. Okay. Um, above the supraorbital margin, there is a little ridge called the superciliary arch. Cilia meaning hair. Uh, super meaning uh, on or above. So we have superciliary arch, that's where your eyebrows go. And then there's this little spot, usually an indentation, between the two superciliary arches, and that is called the glabella. And that's that little indentation right between your eyebrows. And then we have the zygomatic process, which we've already talked about, and that goes to the zygomatic bone. Uh, now, the parietal bone, remember there's two parietal bones, one on the left and one on the right, on the side of the head. Uh, the coronal suture uh, goes on the front, sagittal on the top, lambdoid on the back, squamous suture on the bottom. And the, the only markings I want you to know are the superior and inferior temporal lines. So these are not on the temporal bone, these are above the temporal bone. And there are arches kind of right here. Um, so if you take this line from this uh, zygomatic process and frontal process, it goes around like that. And there's a bone called the temporal, or sorry, a muscle called the temporalis muscle that goes from these lines and attaches here on the mandible and helps to open and close your jaw. So those are the superior and inferior temporal lines. Now the temporal bone by itself looks a little bit wackadoodle. It doesn't really look that wackadoodle as part of the skull, but when you disarticulate it from the skull, skull it looks a little wackadoodle. All right, so it has a zygomatic process. We already talked about that, it goes to the zygomatic bone. And that's this long, thin process that sticks out. And the zygomatic process makes part of your cheekbone. This flat part of the bone is called the squamous part. That's sort of the biggest part of the bone. Um, on the zygomatic process, there is a bump right here called a tubercle. Now, I need to talk about this term, tuber. All right, so tuber is a word for potato. Wow, I'm really bad at writing like this. Uh, and so a tubercle is a kind of vaguely oval potato shaped lump. Um, so we're going to have tubercles. We will also have tuberosities, which are longer, narrower, sort of potato shaped lumped, more like yams. Uh, and so just keep those in mind. We're also going to have protuberances, which are sort of more big lumpy things. Okay, but they all have this, this root of tuber, which just means, um, you know, 
potato shaped something around. Okay, so there's an articular tubercle uh, that is going to help articulate with this uh, front, with the uh, mandible. And then the mandibular fossa is not this indentation here. It's medial to that. It is this indentation right here. And I've got another view that I'll show this a little better. The uh, main part of the mandible is going to articulate into that little fossa. Remember, fossa is an indentation. Then we have the external acoustic meatus. This is your ear hole, okay? The outer ear hole that goes to your eardrum or your tympanic membrane. That's that. And then we have two more processes. The styloid process is pointy like a stylus. It's not really a stylus, it's styloid. Remember, oid means kind of. So it's a styloid process. That sticks down here. And then the mastoid process is this big bumpy thing you actually have a very large muscle that attaches there called the sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to talk about that more when we get to uh, the muscles. If you go from your earlobe back, you will feel a big bump right behind your ear. That is your mastoid process. Okay? Now this is the medial side of the temporal bone. So we're looking from the inside of the skull looking out and you can see this nice flat squamous suture there. We have an internal acoustic meatus. This is not continuous with the external meatus. They are two different holes. We've got the zygomatic process sticking out and then we can see the styloid process and the mastoid process there. And then if we look, here's the inferior skull. Don't worry about these holes yet. Actually, we'll worry about some of those holes. Um, here is the mandibular fossa, okay? So this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. This is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And this is that mandibular fossa. This is the styloid process there and there. Okay, all right, now let's talk about these holes. You've been looking at these, wondering about these. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna come back and do the holes in another video. All right, first we're gonna talk about the occipital bone. The occipital bone does have a couple of holes that you need to know. The first one is called the foramen magnum. Foramen means hole, magnum means big. This means big hole. It's a really big hole. That's where your spinal cord goes through. The bumps on either side of the foramen magnum are called the occipital condyles. Condyle means knuckle. Um, so if you think about a knuckle being like a rounded spot where two bones articulate against each other, move past each other, yeah, or rotate across each other, that's what a condyle is. So these occipital condyles articulate with the first vertebra, the first cervical vertebra. There are holes that go behind the condyles. Those are called condylar canals. And then we have the hypoglossal canal that goes laterally across under the occipital condyle. Uh, and that's called the hypoglossal canal. And the hypoglossal nerve travels through that hypoglossal canal from the brainstem, it actually goes this way, out to the tongue. Other markings on the occipital bone on the outside, we have this crest called the external occipital crest. Yes, there is an internal one. You don't need to know the nuchal lines. You have neck muscles that attach to those. I do, however, want you to know the external occipital protuberance, which is this bump right there. And you can kind of feel that if you go up the back of your skull, from your neck go up, you, you'll feel a bump right in the middle there. That is your external occipital protuberance. It tends to be larger in male skulls, but not always. Women who have very muscular necks will have a larger occipital protuberance. So that's not something that you can, you can use to definitely determine whether a skull is male or female. In fact, it's actually really hard to determine if a skull is male or female. All right, this is the top the super, uh, superior part of the occipital bones. We're looking from the top down into the cranium. The basilar part is going to articulate with the sphenoid bone that goes here. The hypoglossal canal goes through here, the foramen magnum. Uh, and then the part, of course, is the lambdoid suture. And that's the end of that part. I'm going to come back and do a real quick thing about the rest of the holes.